I speak about um, my illness or what I'm dealing with, multiple sclerosis, quite frequently. And last time I listened to one of the videos that I was talking about, some of the issues that I have to deal with, and I just um, wave them off like I don't care. <laughs> That's because I actually don't care. <laughs> However, as I was listening back at the video, I was like, mm, this makes MS sound like a piece of cake. It makes it sound a little bit like it's not that big of a deal <laughs> or like it's not, um, you know, I didn't want it to sound in any way like um, other MS patients are exaggerating or in any that, like nothing like that because <laughs> I realized I need to give you the real picture. Like instead of what I usually do is like, yeah, I don't care because, so I don't go into detail because I personally don't care. It's just something that I have to put up with. I don't want sympathy. I don't want anything like that. However, um, I felt like it was necessary just to <laughs> um, just explain what has happened to me in the past year. So <laughs> I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis about five years ago now, and uh, it was an accidental diagnosis. So they found something in my brain, and they did an MRI scan, and I got a phone call from the doctor saying, can you see? <laughs> and the next doctor called me and said, can you see properly? So I knew straight away there's something, they found something in my brain. It's either a brain tumor or a mess. So obviously I didn't want it to be in. <laughs> like I luckily at that time I had already found Krishnamurti, so I never wasted any time thinking about it until I got there. When I got there, <laughs> I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis because my MRI is just a stereotypical one. <laughs> like it's like the postcard picture of an MS brain, and they were surprised that I wasn't already struggling with certain issues and <laughs> what they don't know is that I've been snowboarding and skateboarding and injuring myself pretty much all my life so I've always tested the limits of my physical <laughs> like what I can do with the snowboard I liked uh, I always liked extreme sports so um, and also I always like I didn't care if I die snowboarding even as a kid like, even though I wasn't quite 100% aware of the danger, I do remember, you know, jumping down cliffs or whatever and going, like, you may die. And I went, like, ah, it's worth it, for, <laughs> worth it for the snowboarding. So um, I've had my fair share of rather bad injuries, so significant injuries like cruciate ligament tear, dislocated shoulder, um, broken leg, broken arms, multiple <laughs> uh, hand, fingers, toes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, if there's something that when I have an injury, I don't respond by going to the hospital and asking them what's going on. I try to just see what I can still do with the injury unless it's obviously broken and needs to be put back in place or I need a cast. Mm, like a tweaked ankle, if, no matter how severe, I wouldn't probably go to the hospital. When I dislocated my shoulder, I went to the hospital like twice and I dislocated it probably, I don't know, like... I think this, yeah, within at least 20, 30 times or something like that. Like not a full luxation, but like a subluxation. So it wasn't quite in the right spot, which is very painful. And now I know how to put it back in place. <laughs> so um, a lot of the ailments that I have, especially physical pain, which is, um, I'm already, I was already treating, so I already stretched a lot. I already um, did a lot of exercises um, on like the massage foam rollers. So I've been doing that for more than 10 years almost every day now I do it daily so I spend about at least a minimum of two hours of doing that <laughs> um like you know while talking and like I'll stretch and do the black roll and it's helped me significantly and um 
with the eye as well. Like I just mm, I go by feel, so I know how, what my skateboard feels like. And then even though I can't see and it seems stupid to skateboard, <laughs> I want to keep my life going. I want to enjoy this for as long as I can, as simple as that is. And um, I have no fear of what I'm doing or what's going to happen because I know it's good for my body physically. Um, also, the um, social group, the... There's so many things about it that I want to stay in for as long as possible. The skateboard scene, especially in Barcelona, like that's why I think even if I can't see, I'll be able to hear what the tricks sound like. So I want to make sure that I keep doing what I love and I'll be able to do it for as long as possible, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> just to give a brief insight what happened to me afterwards so like I didn't really feel that impacted by what's going on it wasn't until I had the MS flare now that I put everything together and realized oh this has been a slowly um, evolving thing and I've obviously had a few MS flares and didn't go to the hospital for it because I probably thought I hit my head or I'm just feeling a bit weird or whatever I didn't care too much and I know now because I know what I felt like then. I thought it was strange. Um, but the seeing issue, I've been telling the doctors and they just tell me it's not a symptom of MS. So all my symptoms, according to my neurologist, <laughs> are not symptoms of MS, which I don't really care about <laughs> because all I know is that this has been slowly increasing and... And la about this time last year, I had my first full-blown heavy MS flare, where um, I think in the beginning I wasn't entirely sure because I thought I may have had a concussion. And then I realized and I felt like I was dying. Um, I couldn't walk properly, like I couldn't feel the side of my face, I couldn't talk, I couldn't think clearly, like... Um, a strange thing that always happens to me is I'm like a zombie. So if you tell me to go stand over there or to stand over there, I don't, I don't have the capacity to counter or discuss or think about what's going on. <laughs> like it's just like you feel concussed. So if you've ever had a concussion, uh, as I've had plenty of times, um, you know, you feel like completely out of place. So basically I've been feeling like that um, for a year now. So every morning when I wake up, I'm in, not every morning anymore, but I'm usually in back pain. So the reason why I get up is because my back hurts and I need to start moving. And then I need to try and force myself to eat some food because I need to eat food before I do sports. Even though I don't really feel any hunger, I barely ever feel hungry. Like even after sports, even when presented with, like when presented with food, like I will usually eat, start eating it. But like I don't feel hunger anymore. Like that's been gone for a year. <laughs> I feel like. When I leave the house, I feel like I've got a black eye. So everything, it's like a bit like, in, I've got like a shadow here. And it literally feels like I've got a black eye so that my eye is closed or half closed. So it's hard to, I have some issues with depth perception and which is an issue in skateboarding, obviously. But you need to like, slowly know what it feels like and then it works so then you need, you rely more on your what it feels like the flow of the movement versus where it actually is with the climbing as well I miss some holds sometimes and I know like hey that's a bit unusual that your leg just missed for like that far <laughs> anyway um but it doesn't matter because then I when as soon then I need to focus more and then I get into this flow again and not rely on the eyes as much as the whole action the entire thing so and 
I don't really want to. It's, well, the one thing that's a obviously an issue as well is that you know you're not going to get better. So I'm like, this is just going to get worse and worse and worse. And this is also uh, like, I don't know <laughs> how I would be dealing with, like, I know exactly how I would have dealt with that. If I hadn't found Krishnamurti, I would have killed myself 100%. At that time, I just lost my, well, I just broke up with my husband. He then caused a rift in the family. <laughs> so, like, I just lost everything, like, literally, like, monetary, friends, family, everything. So <laughs> my best friend for 12 years <laughs> was gone, like, everything evaporated, and then my health went. So I'm fairly certain that that would have been probably the end of my miserable life. But luckily, <laughs> Krishnamurti conveniently came right between... Like me having an breaking up with my ex and um, the M getting the MS diagnosis. That's that's the time that I know. <laughs> like I know that that's that was the cause. Uh, that was the course of events. So mm, another thing that's about uh, about the MS. Like you're so tired all the time so it's so easy to just stay sitting on the couch it's so easy just to go oh no like it's too much today or have a nap or and like I sleep so much now like like eight ten to twelve hours sometimes depending how well I am <laughs> which is crazy because I used to have massive troubles with sleeping <laughs> and um so like it's a it's an ongoing struggle and when I do sports afterwards I'm exhausted and then my theory now is the fitter I am the f faster I recuperate from that type of tiredness and I think it's working or as far as I can see it's working in the beginning it was a little bit hard because the back pain and yeah it was it was I didn't quite know if I was going to make myself or worse by doing sports because I thought that mm, it may be additional stress and if I'm feeling this shit, maybe I need to stay home. And that was the biggest mistake. <laughs> but I didn't get any guidance. I had to find it all out by myself because my everything my doctor said <laughs> is not true. They said I'm going to have an MS flare and I'm going to get treatment and then I'm going to feel better and go back to work. I had an MS flare and I felt crap. And then I had another one, and another one. And I think I had five treatments in one year. Uh, no, five cortisone treatments, two rituximab treatments. So like I've spent like more or less the year in hospital. So my what I, what every neurologist said, and everybody wished me to have a gentle MS with very few flares, blah blah blah. And every time they said that, I said please just don't say that, just just leave it be, <laughs> just leave it as it is, I'm diagnosed with a mess, I'll deal with whatever I have to deal with when it comes along, because hoping for a gentle MS then would have made me <laughs> really depressed when it was an, uh, turned out to be a more aggressive form of MS, but <laughs> I went, like, as soon as I got the MS diagnosis, I was like, okay, People are saying this to me everywhere, so there's a chance that it's an aggressive form. So I checked the scientific papers. I actually checked it out to see how much of a chance there is or what the life expectancy is, like all the scientific like physiology, more or less, of a mess. And um, I then took maybe a little bit of a stoic approach to, okay, what's the worst case scenario? And the worst case scenario was, well, worst case, it's aggressive and within five to 10 years, you completely, you die. So I just went, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> I'm just gonna ex like assume that that's what's gonna happen and I'm gonna live as hard as I possibly can in the next three years of, well, it turned out to be three years. And like, I'm so happy I did that. I did so many things that were daring and unusual but it was just I went by my gut and thought this is 
what I feel like doing right now and the adventure, the flow that I went along. And then I was happy to be sick here because with this back pain, I would really struggle in the cold climate of Austria. So that was like a lucky coincidence. <laughs> then the trial is a lucky coincidence. I'm getting treatment I wouldn't get in Austria. So that's good. <laughs> so um, everything, like I can just... I can always re-narrate everything that it's positive. <laughs> so um, personally, I do not give, like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a fudge about what's going on. It's, it is what it is, and I don't care. Like, <laughs> I've had, like, a really good life, and I've tried my best to try and communicate with you, to tell you why I'm so happy despite all these struggles or all these things that I have to deal with. And the only reason is because I I had the great fortune of listening to Krishnamurti and it made perfect sense to me. Um, all he was saying to me is that we're living in a world based on ideas. And why would you live in a world based on ideas if you can live in reality? So based on ideas mean every religion, every idea every what your mother and your father and your siblings and your society your culture your partner whatever expects of you those are just ideas it's not even real <laughs> it never was real and like as soon as you drop those expectations from yourself you let yourself just be who you are and you can accept yourself for who you are without any compromise, like, like accept everything that happened, like all those skeletons in your closet, look at them, look at them and face them because they're going to be there all your life. And as soon as you can, as soon as you face them, then you can make peace with all of that. And you say, all right, I tried this way, I tried to do this and that and the other. None of that has ever given me true deep-rooted peace of mind and the feeling of arrival this mm, deep joy for life so <laughs> all you need to do is face yourself and face your fears and it's just in your mind like it's not going to hurt you it's just thinking about it it's just facing it just accepting it for what it is and not trying to rationalize it or trying to change it or make it fit your narrative like it is what it is I've got a mess, <laughs> it's a shitty <laughs> illness to have and I'm gonna try and do these videos or then as long as I can <laughs> string a sentence together I'm gonna try and do it and try and convince you that all these people are preaching and all these people that are confusing us like no, you are the answer, <laughs> you are the beginning and the end you are the only one that can give yourself freedom you're the only one that can look at yourself and go like, it's not that bad, you know? I'm just a normal human being. Like, I don't want to be all that. I never liked the superficial society part anyway. Like, it's okay. Like, you, everybody carries, you know? Even, yeah, it's not that. It's, it's, such, an, it's such a small step to receive this amazing salvation, this amazing end to all the struggling, then life no longer is a struggle, it's just a joy ride, like you just ride the waves and it's good. <laughs> so, um, I just basically wanted to say that like, in, I didn't in any way want, intend to make a mess sound like a piece of cake because <laughs> it really isn't like I've I've rehabbed all my life so I know how to rehab but it's basically I have to rehab every day of my life <laughs> from now on and I'm okay with that I'm happy to fight <laughs> just as long as I can to stay alive if I accidentally fall off my skateboard and die I'm sorry <laughs> but to you but I that's just life it's just something that can happen you know it's I'm a normal human being just like you so and um 
yeah, and if anybody in your life struggles with MS, um, just all they need is patience and like just, you know, then everything will be a lot slower and like um, it's easy to get overwhelmed and like it's a struggle, like it's um, it's physically difficult to deal with this. I don't know what how it's like for other MS patients, but um, as I've understood now, like, um, oh, that's what people mean when, oh, they only do one step at a time. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like climbing. You only can go one hold at a time. That's all you can focus on. And that's basically life as well, you know. <laughs> Normal life as well, like if you're trying to change your life or do something different, it's always one step at a time, and we start at the bottom, and from there, you know, if you humbly start at the bottom, it's okay, and every day I start at the bottom. Every day I'm like dizzy, and I can't eat, and I don't want to eat. <laughs> and then I'm not too sure if I'm gonna fall off my skateboard as soon as I step on it or not. And I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be too tired by the time I get to the climbing gym. But it doesn't matter, I'm still gonna try. I'm still gonna give it my best shot. And I'm not best shot, but this is what feels right, this is what I'm doing, and, um, yeah. I think, I am, um, that's just a small little commentary, just because I wanted to say that. <laughs> just in case anybody's out there that's suffering from this and going like, oh, you're not really, painting or this is not what I feel like no it's shit <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing positive I can say about multiple sclerosis other than it allowed me to have the three best years of my life which I wouldn't have done it otherwise so I'm happy to die happy <laughs> and um, thank you very much for listening talk to you soon one love